And then I was like curious, like, what is the mass of a charm cork? <gasps> what or, is the mass of a charm cork? It is 3.1 billion electron volts. That is what my scale said the other day. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I had to convert it and it was very confusing. But yes. Yeah. Welcome to Walk About the Galaxy, the approachable astronomy podcast where the science is universal, the opinions are personal, and the semester is almost over. <sighs> that almost sounded like your <laughs> life was almost over. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we are Strange and Charm, the Astro Quarks, also known as Josh Caldwell. And Addy Dove. Coming to you from the Walkabout studio at the University of Central Florida. Remember to subscribe to us on all platforms, including YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, but not Mastodon or Parachute or Paramount Plus. Yet. Sure. I made some of those up, perhaps. Which Our one? YouTube videos sure. now feature chapter <clears throat> breaks, so you can cheat and go straight to the trivia answers. <clears throat> we are also at walkaboutthegalaxy.com, where you can see how to order a walkabout shirt and support STEM education at the same time. You can contact us anytime at wtg at ucf.edu, and do contact us that way if you order a shirt so we can get it to you as soon as possible. What a great holiday gift. It is a great holiday gift, although it's probably too late to be a holiday oh. gift if you're ordering one from me today. Email us now. Yeah. A New Year's gift. Mm, yeah. New Year's Some gift. Some of those early birthdays, early January birthdays that always get looked over. Like MLK. It's a great MLK day Perfect gift. gift. Yes. We could probably handle that. Today, we are happy to welcome, if you were wondering, <laughs> what is that voice? Is that? <laughs> What is that new voice? Uh, Dr. Audrey Martin, postdoctoral scholar here at UCF, working with Carrie Donaldson Hanna and Dan Britt. Audrey, welcome to Walk About the Galaxy. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. And I'm excited to have you here as well, and we're looking forward to hearing about your research. Yes. Our stumper today is Lunar Exploration Vehicle. Oh, no. Yes, please. Okay. <laughs> I'm not stumped. No, I'm just kidding. Actually, um, I may have the title may be a little bit oh, misleading. No. Good. <sighs> you just... get to go to the moon. Yay! That's the good news. Yes. And it's all good news, really. High five. Magically, we have a fully functional Saturn V oh. Apollo stack. Okay. Okay. With, cool. Okay. We have one. And good. Your choice is in its Apollo 17 configuration. Okay. Okay. So the LEM and the rover, whatever, Apollo 17. Okay. You can go okay. down with the Lunar Excursion Module, two people. Great. Or mm. SLS with Orion transferring to the SpaceX um, Flash Gordon rocket. Right. And going mm -hmm. down. Landing Which on the one surface. of those rides do you want to take to the surface of the moon? <gasps> Me. I'm asking you. Yeah. And there's a right answer and there's a wrong answer. Only oh, for you. Yes. Only for oh, you. Oh, boy. And There's a right better. answer for you. <laughs> it's a very personal choice, the stumper. Ah. This is true. And often there's contention. Oh, man. So I'd love to hear your answer first. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's fair. So, Since it's your first time on yeah, the show. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, that's so I don't particularly... I, can I mix and match? No. Oh, no. That's what makes it a stumper, I know, Addy. yeah. So I guess I'm going to go Apollo, honestly. Interesting. Because, like, it was hardware that has flown yeah. and, and did its, its got thing. got that sort of tried and true vibe Yeah, and you're on. saying we have another copy of it. So yes. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fly mm. on that one. Like, I don't think it would be Super particularly comfortable. comfortable. Right. Or, like... Probably wouldn't smell good. Yeah, that's fine. I don't usually <laughs> smoke that great anyway. Oh. Sorry, listeners. But you have a very sensitive sense of smell. I do have a really sensitive nose. I have come really? to know yes. from our years of association. Yeah, I'm actually, I've thought about that a lot. Like, if I go live on a space station or something. How but will I you think, be able to put up with everybody else's... But I think that it's one of those things hmm, where, like, I'm odors get sort of more neutralized because cause there is sort of like this background i don't know i'm yeah. really curious what it smells like on the space station when we got a when we got a <laughs> we when we got a sure payload we back somebody. one time it was still sealed in a bag that had mm -hmm. been sealed when Did it was up on space station and i tried to smell it and i couldn't it, was, it smelled machiny like like the stuff it's, that was inside I the bag see. yeah yeah it smelled like electronics yeah. and stuff like that anyway i'm gonna go, You're gonna go old school old school interesting yeah. Okay. Mm. If you okay. had given me a different lander option, I might have I chose know, differently. Right. Right. So. Mm. Yeah. Do Do we have to do anything, or we're just no, no, on, no. we're just okay? You're yeah. the scientist on the mission. You're, the sci so you're Jack Schmidt. Exactly. Cool. Ooh. 
I don't know about that. You're yeah. in his role. You're in his um, role. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Um, You're not. It's not a quantum leap into Jack Schmidt's body oh, or anything like great. that. Good. Um, my nose is not very sensitive, so smells wouldn't That's be not a, a problem. Concern, right. I get. I mean, my gut is saying, you know, <laughs> She's do the new stuff. Feeling do, pretty yeah. good. Do, so I think. I think you know, Go SLS with okay. Orion. Yeah. Only for the only reason being, I. It's newer and like probably shinier. Right. Yeah. It, and maybe a more spacious. New rocket smell. It has that new rocket smell that I yeah. won't be that able won't to be smell. About too much. But I'll know that it's there. Right. Yeah. And I guess that's important. Yeah, I would uh, go in the first half. Like I'm pretty comfortable with Orion at this point, but Starship doesn't exist. Orion to the moon. Oh, that's a good point. That's my, that was why I. But you chose your options. I'm, yeah, you're, you're stuck. 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 <laughs> you're stuck. Yeah. But that's fun. We'll both be on the moon. So. I think yeah. I'm. I think I'm also kind of with in your camp, Addy. I like. There's just something about that nice. The, the LEM from Apollo missions just looks so nice and stable. It just. <laughs> it's really me, fragile. It's very spindly. It's very spindly. It's true. It's very spindly. Yeah. yeah. But it does. It doesn't make me think. Gee, that thing might tip over. <laughs> and I can't help mm, feeling that fair. way about the star the starship ship landing thing on the moon. Landing on the moon. Yeah. yeah. I think I would have. I'd be fine like I going like, to the moon, but then I'd have fear of heights climbing down the ladder from the yeah, starship. Yeah. I like there's a bunch of other landers that have been that are in the works also for, for yeah. the moon and those make me more they're more of the more... lander configuration right. and those make me more comfortable than the starship okay. configuration right. how tall it's is very it? tall they need an elevator because it's a rocket it's a big old rocket and they're at the top of that it. is really so i'm i'm all in now i'm like yes definitely Def- i want to i want to take the ladder down okay that sounds so fun it is a fun little and then elevator have to, like, okay. climb back up yeah all right in lunar gravity be easy right. yeah exactly perfect right I love okay it. Well, today we'll talk about axions, Europa, and Audrey's research. But first, this episode of Walk About the Galaxy is brought to you by Magnons. Spice up your life with Magnons. Unlike the particles of your everyday existence, Magnons are quasi-particles with all the benefits of boson behavior without the pesky detail of being an actual thing. Okay, (laughs) good. So cool your ferromagnets and cook up a tasty gas of these quasi-particles as your electron spins become misaligned. Mention Walk About the Galaxy when getting your magnons, and we'll throw in a collection of paramagnons at no additional charge. Visit our website, www.magnonsareus.com, and check out our full collection of delicious quasi-particles, including phonons, spinons, orbitons, and more. Magnons. Melts in your mouth, not in your hands. Well, that's M&M's. Yeah, that was so, too easy. You know, There's always a tagline at the end that's an actual thing. Oh, okay. Sometimes M&Ms it's easy. do sometimes melt in your hand. They do, especially in Florida where yeah. it's humid and they, the color then, comes yeah, off on your skin. Your yeah. all they're not melting, but they're like... You know, and actually, to be yeah. fair, the magnons might as well. That's a temperature-sensitive oh. thingy. Yeah. And oh, so it, it state fits physics state. still. Fits you them. have to take something down. Like, I don't really understand this. It's kind of in theme, in line with axions, which we'll talk about later, which I mm-hmm. also don't really understand. But it has something to <laughs> the do theme with of this episode. starting very, very cold, mm-hmm. and as everything is aligned, and then as you warm things up, you get these little quasi-particles of misaligned spin, and those little pockets of spin act like particles, quasi-particles. <clears throat> anyway, Stable. we were speaking about going to the moon, and the space <gasps> yes. news, Orion has just left lunar orbit. OMG. Have you seen the images have, of the Earth and the Moon? I have seen. And no. Orion. <gasps> I'm looking up now. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. So Orion has, we talked about how Orion has these cameras on the ends of its solar panels so it can get, like, selfies. Yeah. But it also is getting all these amazing images of the Earth and the Moon from these uh, cameras. And there's, like, videos of... Just the moon, a time lapse as, the, as Orion the Earth, is like rotating, well, and you see the Earth and the Moon come into view, and yeah. you can see the Moon eclipsing the Earth because it's out past. It was out. It's way, it still it is. was way past it was the Moon. Way past the Moon, and so it had the Moon in the foreground and the Earth in the background, and they were like almost the, the same, same size. size. Yeah. Oh my God, they're so cool. Yeah, those different views than we've <clears> seen before. It's and it's like about the spacecraft, and it's all shiny. Yeah. One of the cool things about the Orion capsule is that it's all shiny because <laughs> they put some sort of the, whatever the coating you're they have make, on the you outside. You feel even better about her have stumper you seen it? decision. Did you find the picture? I'm, I mean, I'm looking at a whole bunch of pictures. Okay, I yeah. don't know. I mean, some of these don't look real. Right. 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 This is incredible. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, so yeah, it's pretty cool. They're insane. And like, and it's like, I don't know. I love it. And so, so, so the background of this and these being able to get these amazing images is that I think the last time we met in the last episode of walk about the galaxy, we discussed, um, the launch of right. Orion on the Artemis one of or Artemis one on a space launch system. And that's it's all gone pretty nominally as far as I can tell so far. Seems, seems like the mission's just chugging along. Yeah. Um, so it's in the super weird orbit, and it's done a couple of burns at this point. So its first burn was to put it into a – well, not its first burn. But one of its burns was to put it into a lunar orbit. It's, it's called, a, a, called distant a distant retrograde, retrograde orbit. orbit. Which distant ref- means it's far away, which it's actually part of its orbit is taking it really <laughs> Wait, far let me, away. Let me take some notes. I know. Distant I know. means far away. <laughs> yes. And retrograde means it's going actually in the opposite direction of the moon's rotation. So um, that's so yeah. it's a really sort of a weird orbit, but it makes yeah. sense for what the dynamics of what they're trying to do in this in this case. But so it went really far away, the farthest we've ever sent any of these human-rated space vehicles. Um, and it's now on its, its way, way back. Home. And it just recently did a lunar exit burn, a lunar orbit exit burn to come back to us. And it's going to splash down in the Pacific Ocean in yes. the next few days. And uh, oh. unlike the Apollo capsules, which were hoisted out of the water, this is going to be gulped <gasps> up by a ship. By a whale? Is that what they're called? No. Whale technology? It's basically, I mean, it's a ship that is imitating a whale because it opens a big uh, hull that, that includes a subsurface <gasps> level, um, so cool. you know, mouth yes. so that the oh, I thing can this. just float inside yeah. and then you close it up. Is that, in, is that more efficient? Um, Who knows? I don't know if efficient is... I mean, it's more efficient in some way because uh, it sounds easier to do for me. I don't know what's involved with, like, building the ship part of things. Yeah. But, like, if you've got a ship that can do that, yeah. then I think they well have do ships that, that can do like that because they have to, like, rescue the... other ships sometimes. And, oh, yeah. so it's not, like, a new I don't, engineering I don't, thing? I don't think the ship is designed for oh, okay. this specific, that, but I may be but wrong. Then that makes sense. Yeah. I'm, I'm not sure about I actually, that. yeah, I haven't done as much research on the naval ship that, that's right. involved in this <laughs> right. endeavor. Um, uh, yeah, any others? They com- the, so they just completed a burn yesterday on December 1st, and it's going to do a um, flyby of the moon on December 5th, and then a return on December 11th. Okay. Nominally. So it still has one more, lunar, one more lunar flyby. Yes. Uh, yeah, because it did its the, burn when it's still far, far away. Part of that distant part of the orbit that you were describing means... It, in orbit of the moon takes a long time. Yeah. Um, so mm. it's got one more of those to do. Uh, and then it'll be home. So that's exciting. And then we're going to have a long, frustrating wait for Artemis 2, <sighs> unfortunately. Are. Yeah. Probably more than a year. Yeah. You think so? I think that's I don't remember even the what timeline plan. they've said. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. Artemis 2 was going to have humans on it. It will have humans. It's going to have humans on yeah. it. Sorry. That's oh, really? Yeah. Yes. Oh, I didn't realize Artemis too. Yeah. They will not, they will not <gasps> they land. Won't go, they will they not land. Well, no, no, no. But they'll the they'll but go they'll, around. But there will be humans in the Orion capsule. They'll go for a ride. And it'll go around, around the moon. And... Yep. Come home. So something similar <gasps> oh, to what this boy. one has done. It'll be yeah. Apollo eight. But with people, okay. right? It's going to be our Apollo eight. With people on board, smelling each other. Yeah. In like a year. <laughs> yeah. Something like a year or so. Yeah. 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 And then after that. Is the landing. Right. But that timeline is even less known because we have to wait on the lander. Right. Mm. Yeah. Right. Which we are expecting a test flight of that system in the next few months. Yeah. Um, any mm. other space news? Um, there was supposed to be a launch this week of a couple of other satellites that we talked about. Um, lunar so satellites. L- lunar satellites. So there's this. Lunar flashlight, right? So lunar flashlight is, is actually a ride along. But the main, so this is on a Falcon 9. The main launch is actually this, um, a Japanese company called iSpace, a lunar lander. Um, and it's called Hakuto. Or I'm probably saying it wrong. Uh, but so it's a little, it's the first private um, company, Japanese company, um, to build this kind of thing. And okay. it's a little baby lunar, lunar lander that's supposed little to go. Little bitty, bitty lunar lander? I mean, it's probably a little bigger than that. Okay. But, but it's supposed to go to the moon. But there's been some issue with the Falcon 9 rocket. Um, and oh. so they haven't launched. Okay. Yeah. There has been a there's been an impressive run of launches. There has. Uh, this year we're cl- approaching <clears throat> the end of 
2022, and we will have our, our typical year-end. annual count yes. of uh, launches. Count but, of launches um, and predictions for next year. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that we've set or will set a record for launches from the Space Coast, at least. I don't know about worldwide. Yeah. But the launches from here... And Audrey, okay. Speaking of worldwide launches, though, yeah. there was recent. There was just another launch um, from China of three astronauts to their space station. Um, so they're up there now. Okay, really? Yeah. That's not a permanently manned space. This is person permanently. Space this is. I think this is the, the first step. Like, so they've had like smaller had crews growing up, but they leave it unattended for a lot of time. But I right. think this might be one of the first ones where they're going to start having Ro- more people longer. Rotation. I don't know if it'll be continuous oh, wow. like the ISS yet, though. Yeah. But, hmm. yeah. Audrey, you have only been here in Central Florida for six months or something like that? Yeah. Well, I moved in August. Oh, the so, lovely time. I know. Mm-hmm. It was the best time to come to yeah. Central Florida. It was yeah. so great. Where um, did you come here from? Flagstaff, Arizona. Hmm. Oh, okay. So very different. A very different kind of climate. Yeah, yes. very different climate. Yes. Um, and you got to enjoy a couple of hurricanes. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's been active. So, yeah. Active yeah. It went from monsoon here. season to hurricane season. Right. Perfect. But also, yeah. I imagine and hope you've been enjoying being able to step outside and casually see a rocket taking off. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, we saw um, we saw the Artemis launch from our... Just from your like yard. yeah, from right. like down the street. We just right. went down the street. It was amazing. Right. It was so yeah. cool. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah. Were there That's other amazing. crazy people out in the middle of the night? On there your was street? I mean, it was it was yeah. Me, my husband and our roommate. Oh, and then okay. also I think maybe our neighbors or something. Someone else kind of just like poked their head out. Yeah. It was at two in the morning or something, so it's yeah. not the kind of time when you would typically have a lot of people. No, but I love milling around. seeing if there are other people right. out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I usually yeah. hear my neighbors out in their yard when we go out, and I I um, justify my laziness of not going to the coast for launches with the argument that it's cooler just to be able to see it from uh-huh. your yard. Okay. Anybody can go so to a launch. Cool. Okay. Anybody can do that. Sure. I don't have to. Uh-huh. I can just see it from my house. Mm-hmm. I mean, not everybody can go to a launch. I can see my launch from there. <laughs> um yeah, it's pretty uh, good, I, I, good perk of being definitely out Definitely a good perk. I want to make one quick nerd news note. Oh, yeah. Josh has been excited I'm obsessed, about this. I'm obsessed with the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday song that's been released. On I have Disney not Club. watched it yet. Holiday well, there's a whole... There's, a, there's a new Guardians. Holiday, that's not what it's called. It's holiday special. There's a holiday special, yes. and there's a song at the beginning that I'm obsessed with. Is it pretty excellent? Hilarious. Are we going to have a walkabout video in the theme of that song? That is an excellent idea. Like a music video? We yes. have we have one music video. We have really? 1.5 mm-hmm. 1. music videos. Oh, that's true. We have 1.5 music videos. Okay. Yeah. The 0. .5, we can't publish it until it's 1.0, but we do have a 0. .5 because we have the audio. We yes. just don't have the video There's yet. There's no video yet. Mm. There's chunks of video, but it's not assembled. But we're working on it. Maybe it will become our holiday music video because <laughs> it's probably going to come out in the next couple of weeks. I've been saying that for about six months. Yes. Cool. Just FYI. Cool, cool. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But we could do another video. I'm very excited to see it. Great. In f- a few weeks. Well, Excellent. let us um, find out more about you, Audrey and Martin, research. and the amazing Quiet. things that you're up to. The fan Here quieted down to listen to you. I know. Oh. Oh. Computer fan. I, yeah. My computer has is very interested to hear what you're going to say. Awesome. Well, I hope to not disappoint your computer. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of pressure. Um, yeah. So I do research on um, primitive asteroids, which okay. are very exciting, um, specifically Trojan asteroids. I've heard about this primitive asteroid diet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. What's yeah. the difference primitive between living? a primitive asteroid and a modern asteroid? Um... Well, I wouldn't necessarily <laughs> call it a modern asteroid. <laughs> um, but yeah, these asteroids are like... What would you call like, an asteroid that's not primitive? Uh, differentiated. Um, Modified. Pro- processed. Processed. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. yeah. Okay. So asteroids that really haven't undergone much thermal processing or aqueous alteration. So a- Aqueous alteration meaning they got s- spilled in the water? There was water, and then it got heated up a little bit, and so, like, the minerals on them or in them um, never experienced any other kind of chemical change. In the primitive ones. In the primitive ones. Exactly. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. So, the minerals that are on these asteroids are likely very close to the minerals that formed out of the solar nebula. Okay. Which is... 
very, That's very the exciting. Gold standard. Yes, it's yeah. very exciting. And so what I do is I use mid IR spectroscopy, specifically in the 10 micron region, to look at the silicates that are on these asteroids and determine exactly what type of silicates they are. Okay. Um, so that I can place them somewhere in the solar system. Right. So I'm I familiar with this kind of work, but cool. I'm sort of a UV person. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. On the spectroscopy side mm -hmm. of things, which is a whole different realm. Yes. And I really, so I'm very comfortable with spectra that have lots of narrow mm, features. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right. Like and this. You, behind well, you. like that, although that's not a spectrum, no. but like that. They look like that. Yeah. 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 Right. And your spectra always make me uncomfortable. <gasps> Nothing oh, personal. No. Please don't be offended. I'm so Why? sorry. Well, um, I, no, I'm glad you're here. To I'm hoping that you're going to make me. He's feel uncomfortable because he doesn't understand them. That, that's right. Okay. Because okay, they yeah. look like very smoothly curving things that are hard yeah. to tell. It's it's hard for me to. You want a nice of, spike. I want a spike mm. that says mm -hmm, I'm, I'm oxygen. Here. I'm carbon. I'm right. whatever. And then. These are spectra. It's like that's mm -hmm. that's you know that's, serpent yes. tonight or whatever <laughs> they are things like that exactly. And that. then this <laughs> other one is like this is carbonaceous chondritium. And then when I that's look at that, one. I like I can't really tell the difference. Those are yeah, real they, I mean yeah, they are like very because they're, they're blurby. yeah because there's a lot there's other stuff going on in the UV. You know, you're you, you're dealing with elements, right. whereas out in the mid IR, you're really dealing with the whole crystal lattice, right. and that whole crystal lattice can be um, affected by so many different things. If you have different, you know, um, slightly different elements, it's going to change that very vibrational frequency, which is going to shift that feature over a little bit. And if that feature shifted over a little bit, then it can change other things. And if you have a whole bunch of other minerals right. in the mix, it's complicated. It gets, it gets messy. Yeah. 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 But they are there. Back to what Addie was saying, my unease is born from um, not being able to really comprehend it as well in the UV. Yeah, I see. Feels, I understand. It feels at least more yeah. comprehensible. Yeah. yeah. A lot of the IR features, like you were just saying, right, come from vibration and like mm -hmm. rotation, right, of the molecules yeah. themselves. Yeah, right. okay. definitely. So they were, they're these... Um, so we're talking about reflectance spectra. So is that right? Or emission? Both reflectance and emission. Okay. Yeah. So, oh. so mm -hmm. these asteroids have a certain temperature, which means they radiate... Exactly. Light, but since they're not very hot, that light's in the IR, the mm -hmm. infrared, where yep. you're looking. They're also reflecting solar infrared. Yep. And because they're these complicated minerals with a lot of atoms in each molecule, and you mentioned a lattice structure, mm -hmm. I sort of uh, like to think of analogies of like, you know, spheres connected by springs. Yeah, yeah, that's and perfect. there are so many different connections there that there's lots of different ways those things can jiggle around mm -hmm. each different way of jiggling produces some other little ripple is yes that fair that is yeah spot on yeah so you have a very difficult job well and <laughs> to add to the difficulty it's not just the minerals but it's also um the texture of the regolith itself yeah. which is the other side of what I right. have been studying. Particle sizes and stuff. Particle right? sizes and Porosity. fluffiness. Yeah. yeah. How close each particle is yeah. to, the na to its neighboring particle. Yeah, exactly. How and closely so packed they are. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. the photons are so big. That yeah. doesn't make yeah. sense. But they're so big that they're, they interact with their neighboring particles depending on how closely packed they are to each other. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. yeah. And so these Trojan asteroids that are super primitive, when we look at their mid IR spectra, they look like a comet tail, which is mm. super bizarre. Yeah. They don't, they're not comets. They're right. not, they don't have extended sources, but my they sort research. Of look like a gas. They a, kind of do. Yeah. They look like there's like just a, like. Like a cloud of particles rather yeah, than a rock. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so. The result is that they're just super fluffy. Mm. So the Trojan asteroids are the ones that share Jupiter's orbit. Yes. And we're particularly interested in those these days because of Lucy. Exactly. Yeah, What's Lucy? Lucy? Oh, we've talked about it before, but remind our listeners what Lucy is. Ooh, okay. So Lucy is a spacecraft that 
is on its way to the Trojan asteroid swarm. Yeah. It just did its first Earth gravity assist. Oh, oh really? I missed that. Yes, it was um, in oh, mid-October. So. Oh. Yeah, I we totally... got nice pictures of the moon. We got um, some dart observations as well, which is really cool. Um, you like you were observing been, like, the dark over... target? Yeah. That was probably right oh. around the time of the Artemis launch, so it probably got lost in that yeah. news cycle. Yes, yeah, it did. Um, there'll be another EGA or Earth Gravity Assist with Lucy. Yeah, yeah. Before going out. Wow. I it's mean, got we're a talking weird about... orbit. It does a bunch of loop, loop, loops. Before yeah, it, goes it looks out. like a. Um, it looks like a plate of spaghetti, is what I call it. <laughs> okay, it's doing two Earth Gravity Assists. Yeah, I mean, I can double check just yeah. to make sure, but I'm I'm almost okay. positive. We believe you. Uh, I do believe you. Yeah. Um, you have a very trust-inspiring And then it'll go place. out to Jupiter, and then it does these fun mm-hmm. little loopy orbits around Jupiter, too. Right. Yeah. I call it, it the Princess something... Leia diagram. Well, it looks actually... Oh, yeah, yeah. Definitely. It a little cinnamon bun. Mm-hmm. But, but what's interesting is, actually, it's it's evocative, at least, of the Orion distant retrograde orbits around our own moon. It's sort of uh, where Jupiter is playing the role of the moon in that case. As it often does. You know, because those distant retrograde orbits for Orion are sort of visiting points in the moon's orbit that are very far away from the moon, just as Lucy will be visiting points in Jupiter's orbit that Mm -hmm. are very far away from Jupiter, but where these asteroids happen to be hanging out. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. I was half listening just to make that's sure that's, that... That's, that's, that's what sorry. I'm that's really sorry. Nobody do. is doing more than, than half, half okay. listening. Okay. I just... I wanted to double check that there is a second... So there's a um, second Earth, Earth assist and then what? Yeah. So that's December 12th, 2024. Oh, wow. Then okay. we fly out and we're going to pass a main belt um asteroid called mm, donald johansson right. oh yeah we've talked about donald johansson yeah before. good old donald and then <laughs> uh then we'll hit up the trojan swarm starting with euripides and in what year 36 uh euripides? 27 i say euripides okay i know i it's, no, i yeah. wasn't questioning your pronunciation I was there are multiple the pronunciations okay. and that's okay yeah Addy, is your asteroid Addy Dove or Adrian Dove? Addy Dove. Nice. Yes. Yeah. So it could have flown by Addy Dove or Joshua Caldwell. Could well, have. I mean, yeah, it, maybe. Yeah. I mean, it's but still maybe might. it will. Yeah, it might. Maybe I, don't I know. should look up where my asteroid's going to be when Lucy's passing <gasps> through the you area. You should. Yeah. I don't have any idea where my asteroid is. I looked Somewhere it up when I first when it first got it's it. Main belt asteroid. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. cool. So I'm excited. Yeah. So uh, yeah, and that's so a you, very cool mission. So you're doing, you're working on Lucy, but you're also yeah. do some lab work, right? Looking I at do. these spectra and understanding fluffy spectra and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. Exactly. I like some good I fluffy, love fluffy spectra. spectra. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Let me. I love um, fluffy spectra. <laughs> <laughs> now it's, it's sounding a little bit like a Saturday Night Live Christmas special. Now is it? I love fluffy spectra. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. You know what I'm talking the, about? The like the sweaty balls. Sweaty balls. Yeah. And yeah. The we could Betty, make this is all part of our Betty, holiday special we're that's making right, apparently. That's right. Well, let me. Uh, so, as you know, Audrey, we have a trivia. Yes. In, uh, each episode of Walk I'm Out the nervous. Galaxy. Um, it's very high stakes, so you're, it's appropriate to be nervous. So, oh here's the trivia, which will uh, actually tie into our. Um, maybe I'll do I'll do the axions first, and then we'll finish on Europa. If Sounds that's okay great. with you. It gives me more time to figure out what I'm going to talk about. Okay. Uh, so our trivia will segue us to uh, a news discussion. report about axions. Correct. Axions are a potential candidate for cold dark matter. Dark matter being called dark matter because we don't see any light interacting with it, but we see gravitational effects from something. So <clears throat> there's some mass in uh, galaxies and galaxy clusters that's causing things to move around in a way that cannot be explained by the matter that we do see. That's the dark matter, cold dark matter. There are some, there were, maybe there still are some hot dark matter candidates, but an axion is a particle that has been proposed to, uh, as a potential dark matter candidate. Okay. And it originally came about to solve a problem in quantum chromodynamics. Oh, I love solving problems in quantum chromodynamics. <laughs> same, same. Yeah. Yeah. Do you really? Mm-hmm. Well, you're ahead of me then. <laughs> <laughs> this particular problem recognized that, and I'm quoting here because mm-hmm, I can't really um, 
a non-trivial vacuum structure, as you know, uh-huh. could permit violations of, course. of the combined symmetries of charge conjugation and parity. Oh, yeah. Uh, obviously. And you don't want what to do we that. Call, what we call CP, oh, for short. Mm-hmm. Sure. That's yeah, going yeah, yeah. to be yeah. important. I hate it when there's some CP, CP issues. Some CP issues. Mm. So... A parameter was introduced. I don't even think I'm going to understand the question. You I've are. You're forgotten. totally going to. You're, you haven't gotten the question <laughs> oh yet. You're totally going to okay. understand the okay. question. Um, a parameter was introduced to deal with this problem called theta. Oh, good old theta. And theta sounds like it's a, that's a symbol we use for angles. Sure. And sure enough, theta, according to the math, could have any value between zero and two pi. Oh. But to okay. make or tau. to make physics make sense. Oh. It had to have a value very very close to zero. Oh well, and just call it zero. But not zero. And so that's one of these things that sounds just an weird, error. Yeah. You know, yep. it's like, why would the universe make this thing have a value very close to zero when in principle it could it have be any anything value. between zero and two pi? In 1977, Roberto Pecce, whose name I'm mispronouncing, and Helen Quinn proposed that this fudge parameter factor theta is a field with an associated particle which was called the axion. True. By Frank Vilcek. Stephen Weinberg proposed a different name. Oh, good old Stephen Weinberg. And finally, your trivia question okay. is, which name did Stephen Weinberg propose for the axion that okay. was not accepted okay. as the name of it's the axion? multiple choice? It is multiple choice. Oh, okay. Yes, yes. Your, your choices we are... We don't answer. Okay. Your, you we'll don't write to it later. Hold your answer. Okay, your, okay, your okay. choices are Thetan, mm-hmm. Higlet... Minion, the nice particle. Mm, not nice. Nice. Okay. The mm. nice particle or the spinion. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know if I'm all. pronouncing all of them right or not. Wait, what was the first one? Thetan. Oh, what was the second one? Piglet. Wait, what With was the H? third one? <laughs> <laughs> and the fourth? Okay. Piglet. <laughs> okay. we'll I'll okay. give you those choices Piglet. again when we come back Piglet. to it. So mm. the Axion story okay. is yeah. probably going to be shorter than the Axion trivia question, but uh, <laughs> 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 which everybody listening, if there are any Tune left, out. is really happy They're really about. scrubbing ahead yeah. in the, in That's the, right. in the YouTube at this point. Yes. Yeah. The Axion story is just that... Um, the whole thing with cold dark with dark matter is how do you see it? We just see its effects. Yeah. Right. One thing, indirect detections. Right. So one thing matter so matter makes things orbit it differently. That's how we know about dark matter in the first place. But it also can act as a gravitational lens, which is one of my favorite mm, things like about the universe. About gravitational lenses or GLs as we call them. Yeah, I just I love I gravitational lenses. Yeah. They're so fun. So yeah. There is a new theory or study and modeling that suggests that um, axions could clump together into some clusters that are massive enough to produce micro lensing events. Kind of like we've talked about with exoplanet detection, where a planet around a star where the... uh, is the star is a lens Mm -hmm. the planet is like a gravitational flaw in that lens and it produces a funny blip in the light curve of the things that are shining through that gravitational lens so these axions may clump into um, mini clusters if they have a mass within a certain range that could produce observable micro lensing events and i thought that was pretty cool um it's not a trivia, but I just the, the, I was curious about like so what is the mass of these things, and because it's so small, it's given in funky units. <laughs> mm. So the mass of the axion for this idea to work uh-huh. is around one milli electron volt. Oh. Then I was like, I can't remember what the masses of other things are in, in electron, electron volts. volts. It turns out the mass of an electron in electron volts is about a half. Okay. Um, and this is milli? And this is a thousand times oh, smaller. Okay. Right. A thousand times smaller than the mass of an electron is the punchline. I heard it and it was very confusing. But yes. Yeah. 3.1 billion. 3.1 billion. Okay. Wow. 3,000. 3, wait, is that, how is, is that true? 3,100 mega electron volts. But wait, you said an electron is only... It's much more massive than an electron. Oh, the I charm like an port. electron should be one. It should be one. I do. And it bothers me that it's a half. Yeah. Um, How much is a is a strange? A strange quark is quark. only a hundred million. Oh, 
and Only the top the top quirk is 172 billion. So Jim Cooney mm-hmm. is uh, throwing his weight around. I have like no sense of what this means. And no, and well, you know about and protons and neutrons. And oh electrons. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. So anyway, the axion mm-hmm. and so is, these, and these... Uh, an electron is like two thousand yeah. times less massive than a proton. These things are about maybe if this idea works because we haven't seen them yeah. a thousand times less massive than an electron. And these clumps that we're seeing, these dark matter clumps, oh, that's the other interesting thing. Are like mm-hmm. ten to the nineteen kilograms. Right. So yeah. I was like, okay, let's put that in something that anybody understands. So yeah. that, that's about a thousand times or a few thousand times less massive than the moon. Okay. But it's also oh, they're oh. tiny little clumps. They're tiny in the astrophysical sense, yeah. mm-hmm. but not in the planetary mm-hmm. sense. They're kind of like big asteroids. But that's still impressive to be able to create a micro lens with something that it yeah. is with a mass that small. It How is. close does, does it, be, it have to be to be that, detectable? You're now in the realm of questions Josh cannot answer. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting. We'll never know. We may never know, but we may know. That was the point of the story is that if they are the right mass, then these things may have produced something which would enable us to detect it, which would be cool because we would maybe then know what dark matter is. Uh, Let's hear about Europa before I inflict axion nomenclature on you again for the trivia. Did you have another question about axions? I was just looking at the article again and remembered that there are stars. Axion stars, potentially. Right. Would those have light? So, yeah, but I thought, what is a star? A, an axion star? <laughs> There's a whole category of of what are called strange stars, like quark stars is one. Okay. And prion stars okay. is another one. And I can't remember. but there, Boson there, stars? There are these weird stars yeah. that are yeah. supporting themselves against gravitational pressure not by the normal fusion reaction, but by some mm-hmm. other bizarre um, mm-hmm. reactions that I totally perfectly Does understand. Does that fit the IAU definition mm-hmm. of but a star? I don't have the time right that's at this instant know. to okay. explain. Oh, yeah. That's probably yeah. Got it. it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Should we... Uh, so if we want to rotate to something that whose mass we know pretty well is Europa. Europa, um, Europa is always exciting to us. Um, we're also heading there. Because we're also heading there. Although it hasn't been launched yet. That one hasn't launched yet. Mm. Juice. Um, and the Europa and Clipper. Europa Clipper. And, yeah, Clipper. Um, but so there's this new paper out about plate tectonics on Europa. What? That's exciting. So plate tectonics exists here on Earth, and that's like one of the only planetary bodies that has plate tectonics. Pe- tectonics. Like legit. It's pretty unique to our body. And plate tectonics is the idea that there's big chunks of Earth, of material, you can sort of divide up that move independently of each other. Right. And it does that on Earth because we have the solid stuff on top. I'm not the geologist. You should be explaining this. <laughs> Technically, I have no degrees in geology. Oh, perfect. Me neither. <laughs> uh, plates on top of a more liquid or um, viscous underflow so that they can move around and they run into each other and they subduct. And that cr- and it creates all of the really interesting geology that we see. And it also means things can move around. Right. We get continents changing and yeah. all that crazy stuff. I mean, it's not a it's not a coincidence that the east coast of South America looks like it fits in the west coast of Africa because it exactly. actually used to be it there. Used to. Yep. But um, but it is worth. I always have to remind myself that plates, the tectonic plates, of the Earth do not equal continents. No. The Correct. continents are the upper scab on some plates. Yeah. But not. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And like we get. Uh, mountainous regions and stuff from where plates are running into each other. So the some Himalayas continents have multiple plates. The Himalayas are being formed as we speak by the Indian plate I think it's the Indian crashing plate. into the Asian plate. Mm-hmm. I'm sure I didn't name those right, but India is moving <laughs> northward yeah. and the Himalayas are growing as a result. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cool. But so, so we don't what, have, but like Mars doesn't have this. Right. The moon Venus doesn't have doesn't. it. Venus doesn't have it. Venus maybe has some weird other stuff happening. Venus definitely has some weird stuff happening. Yeah. But it doesn't have plates, which may be part of the reason why it's not the greatest vacation destination these days. It's true. Yeah. But so Europa maybe does. Which maybe makes it a great vacation destination. Probably. Yeah. So there's this new paper that's looking at, so we know, so we know the surface of Europa. We have all these old images, mostly from Galileo, although we did recently discuss how different mission um got juno, juno got some mm-hmm. new pictures of right. uh europa's surface 
And so most of the time when we look at the surface of Europa, we see all these really, there's like cracks and features and, and there's a lot of different, we know there's a lot of different stuff happening. Um, things are moving around things on the are surface. Things are clearly moving around. Some you see the, cracks, you see yeah. bubbly looking stuff. And some of the cracks have this sort of periodic like sort of cycloid shaped yeah. uh, things mm -hmm. that are probably related to tidal stresses and the moon yeah. rotating mm -hmm. in uh, yeah in its synchronously locked mm -hmm. rotation. Yeah. yeah. So these authors did a study of some specific regions on Europa where we have some of the higher resolution images, and they sort of applied a 3D model to it. So they looked at it as like on a spherical surface, which is apparently a little bit different than a lot of the previous models have done. Okay. Um, and looked at how you can, if you can treat these, and so Europa also is ice, right? But probably has yes. water underneath. So we might expect there to be some sort of like flow of the surface sure. chunks of ice. You got a solid stuff on top of a liquid stuff. Yeah. Um, and so they so re reconstructed regions of the surface as a system of plates. Um, and they find that you can, if you look in sort of regional patches, you can define these plate motions that happened over certain time periods. But they're sort of like really limited time periods in different regions. Um, and also the plate boundaries and the plate motions appear to be much smaller so only sort of on the scale of 100 kilometers or, or less so oh. you sort of have wow. small plate motions okay um, that happen at certain periods of time platelets yes yeah. <laughs> well, maybe they're little <laughs> yeah. platelets i like i mean I, I i need to read this article in a little bit more detail i think but yeah. i i do it does it's, it does sort of make me think like okay how do we define Plates. A plate. What, yeah. How big does it need to be to be a plate? Because, like, we've talked for a long time about how Europa has they're certain saucers. areas. Maybe they're saucers. <laughs> they're, or coasters. Or co well, I don't I know. I like co coasters. 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 They're I like plates that coast along. Yeah. yeah. Does it, did it say how long each episode lasts? Mm, yeah. Lasted? Like, approximately? I think so. Because my, I'm wondering, okay, there are these periods of activity so okay what is causing this activity and can we predict it or something and uh -huh. then yeah. could we see because it, it, they said it's not active now correct yeah it would be cool to catch some right. activity um yeah. which and it know, could be that other portions are maybe a little bit more active right now it's just yeah. not where they did the analysis that's, right. yeah that's that's a good point too um yeah i don't remember exactly how long they move over um, it's like they said it's like episodic, um, episodic, but it's not periodic. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And um, it's and all the and the ones but that's the, the different of, areas they studied probably didn't happen at the same time. But that's kind right. of more interesting because like all the external forcing that you know the the moon is orbiting with a set period. It has mm -hmm. vibrations with a set period. It's getting perturbations from the other moons. All those things have this sort of predictable periodicity to them. If it's not following those, then it says there's stuff going on inside. Just like the yeah. Earth's volcanic activity and tectonic activity is driven by what's going on inside mm -hmm. the body, this suggests that maybe there's cool, you know, uh, complex interior to Europa. Yeah, so they say the plate motions happen in a period of time less than the surface age of Europa. Which is oh. less than a hundred million years. Oh, good. So, it's really yeah. narrowing the count. But I mean, there. it does. It does. So, like on Enceladus, <laughs> we know that like in a certain region, it's very active right mm -hmm. now. And we think on Europa, maybe there are certain regions that are a little bit more active. Oh, that's right. Yeah, with the like geysers, yeah. maybe yeah. some jetting or something. So it mm -hmm. could. So yeah. So maybe is it like right. is there convective heating in the interior that has to do with tidal heating mm -hmm. that affects different areas at different times? Right. Yeah. I don't know. Interesting. All right. Are you ready to hazard a guess on Steven Weinberg's proposed name for the axion? Your choices again are Thetan, Higlet, Minion, Nice Particle, nice. or Spinion. I love all of them. I know. They're so I cute. I like Higlet the most. I do too. I don't think that's what it is. I might name my next cat Higlet. When, when was this? 77. 77. Ish, 78 okay. maybe was the name. The proposal was 77. I think it was the next year or the year after that the name was set I feel upon. like Phaeton is your own false flag. Uh, that's what it feels like. It's kind of, you know, too on the nose. Yeah. Uh-huh. And if that's what it was. I'm going to go Higlet. Ooh. Um, 
Wait, can you repeat them again? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Thetan, Higlet, Minion, Nice Particle, and Spinion. Spinion. I'm going with Spinion. Okay. It is actually the Higlet. <laughs> no! <laughs> Yay! You could have picked uh, Higlet also. I know. It was, but, it was my favorite. So yeah, do, you know why, do you know why? Because like Higgs boson, right? right. And yeah. they're like maybe boson related? They are, are they bosons? They are a pseudo Nambu Goldstone boson. You just said what? not words, Josh. This is, I'm not making this up. The you axion are, though. is a pseudo Nambu Goldstone boson. What does Nambu mean? This is a topic for another episode <laughs> of Walk About the Galaxy, but it's somebody's name. Oh. Nambu Goldstone is two people's names. So, so this it's, is a, it's this like, like a boson that is. Called the the it's Nambu. It's like a Nambu Goldstone boson. Okay. Oh. Is this a, in it's a Collider? It's a Nambu Goldstone boson. Are those in Collider? I don't even think they're in that game. Yeah. Um, the There's reason, a game. But mm -hmm. you haven't asked, why is it called an Axion? Why is it called an Axion? So why is it called an Axion? Because it it's named after a brand of laundry detergent because it cleaned up a problem. I remember this. We've talked about this in the late, also in the way back. Like in episode Aww, 18 probably, or something. Probably, yeah. 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 Well. I like that. I yeah. think that's too. a good one. I like Higlet name. still, though. I, yeah. I, yeah, I also like Higlet. Higlet is delightful, but an axion doesn't sound delightful. It sounds very physics-y. Yes. But then when you find out that it's named after soap, then it's delightful itself. Is it? Yeah. Okay. I like soap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I knew even, that about even you. Even though she doesn't have a very sensitive sense of smell. No, yeah. no, yeah. While it may have felt like a distant retrograde orbit around the moon, it was just another episode of Walk About the Galaxy. Give us five stars and we'll give you the universe. Be sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram to get all our updates and check out our website at walkaboutthegalaxy.com. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, which now feature chapter markers so you can skip straight to Higlet. <laughs> Catch up on old episodes wherever you get your podcasts. Follow us on mm -mm. at walk underscore the underscore galaxy. And ask us questions <laughs> anywhere using hashtag AskWTG. Our theme music was composed by Richard Jerusic. Production assistance is provided by Logan Basinger. Thanks to Audrey Martin for joining us today. Thank you, Audrey. Thank you for it's having me. It's to have you with us. Thanks to our listeners in Phoenix, Arizona, and around the world. Stay safe. I'm Josh Caldwell. And I'm Addie Dove. We're the Astro Cork signing off until the next episode of Walk About the Galaxy. Piglet. That's so cute. <laughs>